welcome to the Giving Voice to Depression podcast, produced in partnership with the A.B. Corcor Foundation for Mental Health. I'm Terry, the creator and co-host of this podcast. I've lived with depression most of my life, and I know how easy it can be to feel all alone in the experience. I'm not alone, and you aren't either. And I'm Dr. Anita Sands, a licensed clinical psychologist with a number of my own diagnoses, all of which bring a certain amount of anxiety and depression along with them. There is great power in shared experiences. We share our own as we engage in intimate and candid conversations with our weekly guests, exploring different perspectives on and experiences with depression. We keep it real because depression is real. We keep it hopeful because there truly is hope in spite of what depression tells you. Hello, Anita. Hi, Terry. You know, the pressure to buy, make, and give gifts this time of year can be overwhelming. So with this episode, we wanted to offer you a bit of relief. As an act of self-compassion and self-care, we're going to explore some very helpful mental health management practices that could be great additions to our self-care toolkits. And since it is the holiday season, we're going to go so far as to say that these two research-based practices could be considered precious gifts that we could give ourselves and certainly share with others as well. A great thing about them is that they're available free 24-7 to help get or return to more positive mental states. Dr. Barbara Moser is our guest today in this interview that we love to revisit at this time of year. After 30 plus years as a medical doctor and more than a decade working in suicide prevention, she's now teaching mindfulness and self-compassion practices that she believes are suicide prevention upstream. And any time that we can wrestle back some control from our depression or stop it at the door before it moves in with its baggage, we are well served to seize that opportunity. So here again is Dr. Moser, guiding us in these practices as she gives voice to depression. All right, we will dive in. If we're going to talk about mindfulness and self-compassion, I think we should start by saying what they both are, and even though self-compassion comes second, I'd like to talk about that because I just think for those of us with depression, we may be even worse at speaking to ourselves as though we're speaking to someone we love. Yes, absolutely. And for some folks, it's a concept that really never occurs to you unless it's really put in front of your Mm -hmm. face. Mm Mm-hmm. And that was certainly true for me. Um, I, I always thought of myself as a very kind and caring medical provider. I, I really genuinely loved my patients and really wanted the very best for them, wanted to do the very best for them, wanted to see them be better. But it never occurred to me, Terry, that I could have that same care and kindness toward myself. And one really, I think, accessible way to think about self-compassion is that self-compassion is really treating yourself with the same care, the same kindness, the same love as you would a dear friend. Oh, let that settle in. Treating ourselves with the same care, kindness and love that we'd give a dear friend. It's a simple and revolutionary idea, especially for those of us convinced by depression that we're somehow not worthy of that tenderness. Self-compassion is very strongly associated in clinical studies with positive mind states, wellness, emotional well-being, life satisfaction, happiness. It's also very strongly associated with less depression, anxiety, stress. I'll link to uh, that if you want to send me a link, just so if people are of the research types, you know, Mm -hmm. who need to see it to believe it, that would be really helpful. Yep. 
So shifting to mindfulness, um, what is it? How does it help? Mindfulness is really awareness of our moment-to-moment experience with acceptance. We recognize we're here, we're now, we're aware of what's happening to us, and we're not judging it. We're accepting it as it is. Now, that doesn't mean if something terrible is happening that we think it's okay. But for right now, in this moment, it is what it is. Can I say one other thing? Yeah. Okay. Mindfulness, like self-compassion, has lots of very robust long-term research to show that it is very helpful with emotional regulation. I believe it. So how would these practices help somebody who's really struggling right now for any number of reasons? Yeah, absolutely. Things are unpredictable. And we, as humans, we like to, we like to be able to count on things. We like to be able to know what's going to happen, and we like to have some sense of control. And this is a very out of control time for for a lot of us right now. Absolutely. I personally, and many people I speak with, are are often on an emotional roller coaster. You know, some days I'm feeling just awful. My depression is kicking up. I'm down. And I'm feeling a little bit of that downward spiral into the hole. Um, Other days, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm going forward. I'm helping other people uh, keep their mood up. So so given all of those things that are going on in our own minds and our own homes and our own lives and, you know, and on this globe, how can we use those tools to help us get through it? So mindfulness and self-compassion are two of the best tools that we have at our beckoning always to help us regulate our emotions, to help us cope with difficult emotions and to meet them skillfully. Barbara shares what she has learned to do to take care of herself when she needs to meet her own emotional needs skillfully. And what helps me in that moment is to be mindful, to be mindful of my difficult emotions, to be mindful that this is a moment of real struggle. And wow, this is really hard. And when I can name it and say, oh, I'm feeling grief, I'm feeling inadequate, I'm feeling fear, I'm feeling sadness, when I can name it, and be mindful of those emotions, it puts a bit of space between me and that immediate experience of the emotion. And it gives me some space to act differently. And in that space, we can take a mindful moment. We can choose to turn off the television and the stressful conversation, turn off our computer Shift our attention to the sunshine or a tree outside our window. Remind ourselves of something safe and peaceful in our world. And breathe. And so it gives me some ability to go in a different direction. And that is a real powerful moment. That I don't have to be swept up in my thoughts, my emotions, that awful, stressful, sinking feeling in my gut. You know, all of it. Wow. Let's talk about breathing for a minute because I have, in uh, full disclosure here, taken your, is it eight-week course? Twice? The breathing thing, it has helped me so much during this to just close my eyes, lean my head back, and, and 20 seconds, and I feel a little reset. I love that, Terry. And our breath is a wonderful way to come back into the present moment And it's very self-compassionate, right? When I notice that I'm struggling, that's a gift. That's kindness to myself because now I can choose to do something kind. And so breathing can be a gift to myself. It can be an act of kindness. 
and it feels good. Okay, so you had us at gift and kindness, and the cherry on the Sunday is that it feels good. So give us a little demonstration. Absolutely. So I often start with three deeper belly breaths. So let's maybe do that all together right now. Find your breath wherever you could feel it most easily. So for some of us, that's at our nostrils, noticing the air going in and out. It may be in your chest, feeling your chest rising and falling. Or it may be in your belly, with your belly going up and down. And taking three deeper breaths and really noticing it. And if you're able to, allowing your out breath to be longer in time than your in breath. So making your exhalation longer. The longer exhalation, as Barbara explains it, involves our parasympathetic and autonomic nervous systems. In lay terms, it calms our nervous system when we're feeling anxious or stressed. I feel it all the time when I'm just wired um, to be very stressed. And for those of us, me too, who have a history of trauma, we can't help this. This is just how we are. This is how our brains function. And so our normal sense of safety and security um, and, and response to danger that we all are wired with is heightened. And you've taught me to, I, to put my hand on my heart or to give myself a hug while I'm doing that breathing. And I have to admit, when you first said it, I was like, yeah, I don't know. But now I almost can't do it without my hands on my heart. Oh, and when you say that, Terry, guess where my hands are right now? <laughs> right over my heart, both of them. Yep. Soothing, comforting touch is another ancient piece of neurological wiring that we as mammals have. And we can gain some comfort and support for ourselves through our own soothing touch, through our own comforting touch. And so putting your hands together in some way, firmly, gently, whatever feels good and affirming to you, putting a hand on your belly. You know, when we notice, when we begin to notice where we're holding stress in our bodies, where we feel it, and we can put a soothing, comforting, supportive touch right on that spot, it helps us to soften a little in that area. Not to make the feeling go away, but just because we're suffering, we're struggling, we have this really difficult emotion, and the soothing touch can really help us in that moment. Terry, I love both of these practices so much. I think that for all of us, living in this increasingly stressful world, I think the one thing that we do all need to focus on daily is to help ourselves and others to feel safe. And that means feeling safe in our bodies, our minds, our hearts, our homes, our schools, our workplaces. I think the safer that we feel, the better we are, and certainly the better our mental health is. I agree, and I would add that also in this increasingly divisive time, feeling connected is important. And when we realize that concept of humanity and that everybody in whatever situation we're in that causes us struggle would also be struggling in that under those same circumstances. Mm -hmm. And when I heard that, you know, there was just this part of me that's like, oh, yeah, it's not me. Not that I think I'm the only one struggling, but I think I'm the only one like failing. You know, I think I'm the only one not handling it as well. And, And hard things are hard. You know, sad things are sad. So it's it's 
normal. It's human to feel um, a reaction to them. Absolutely. Yeah. And we, we do have to be careful not to judge, you know, as, as I think AA says, you don't want to judge other people's insides, you know, when all we can see is the outside. And we don't know what other people are going through, no matter what it looks like on the outside. Yep. And nobody knows what we're going through. So, hey, be nice. Be nice to <laughs> each other. Be nice to us. Be, and be nice to yourself, yeah. which is really a lot of what Dr. Moser was talking about. Yes, so, yes. very grateful to her. Mm -hmm. um, she also, we said last week that uh, Dr. Robert Duff was a founding board member. So was Dr. Barbara Moser, and she is still on the board of our nonprofit. So, we are grateful to her for that as well. If you are interested in more information about Barbara Moser and or mindful self-compassion practices and classes, Barbara offers, rather than a website, her email, barbara at compassionatemke.com, MKE being the abbreviation for Milwaukee, where we're headquartered. We hope you'll join us again next week. We truly hope that our podcast brings a little more understanding, helps you better articulate and reflect on your own experience with depression, or better understand how to support someone else who is struggling. If this episode has been of comfort or value to you, know that there are hundreds of others like it in our archive, which you can easily find at our website, givingvoicetodepression.com. And remember, if you're struggling, speak up, even if it's hard. If someone else is struggling, take the time to listen.